Is America helping Israel by continuously getting in their way and preventing them from what needs to be done and by continuously arming their enemies for decades and decades and decades while at the same time getting rich off of arming them to fight those enemies? Hey guys, Rex here. So don't like hammer away on the keyboard until you hear the full thought because everyone displays their lack of training by how emotional they get in the commentaries and it's embarrassing to me to watch. Okay, so hear the full thought first, chew on it, digest it. And if you actually have something to say, absolutely, we would love to hear from what you have to say below. Okay, but emoting onto the keyboard uh, man, I'll tell you what, do not sign up for my Patreon if that's you. We filter that out, okay? So, is, is America helping Israel by jumping into their way? What am I talking about? You see, America will support countries by attaching our strings. There are strings attached when we have a, we have a special deal. We'd like to help you out. America is like the Al Capone mobster in Chicago of the world. We, we got something. We got an offer you can't refuse. Yeah. It's going to be just a nice, it's just a nice missile launcher. You want this missile launcher program? What strings are attached? Mm. Well, you see all the stuff that you're supposed to be about. We don't really like that. So we want you to be more like us, the Babylonians. <laughs> be more like us. All this morality stuff that you guys are into? No, that ain't going to work with us. We want this program. We want this program. You ever hear of the Margaret Singer? We want that for sure. Let's do that one. That's a good one. Hey, we should let these evil guys inside your country to create a Ford operating base so that we can sell you weapons to blow them up every few years. But don't blow them all the way up because we want to make the most money possible. <laughs> the nuke of truth. <laughs> Ah, my brain! That is the truth. Pharaoh wants to sell Israel more Merkava, more chariots for the endeavors that Pharaoh's going to, on the other side, release. America arms Israel's enemies? Yeah, continuously, nonstop, giant, huge tonnage of weapons, continuously. You think all the money goes, we need to support them with an $11 trillion thing. Just like the same way we've done Afghanistan, Iraq, Vietnam, I mean, all of Africa. Like, look at it. You ever see that movie, Lord of War? That's us. We are the Lord of War. And then we put on the suit of, we are here as a moral, you know, observer to make sure that, like, you're humane. Oh, yeah, America's so humane in wars. I remember that part. America, just like absolutely calling ahead two weeks in advance to the to the Germans held up in the hedgerows in France. Hey guys, we're about to launch the invasion of Normandy. You might want to be careful there because we're going to come in with all these boats and planes and bombers and paratroopers. So make sure you tell all the nice farmers to get out of there. What? You are going to bomb us? That's right. Uh, just uh, exactly where are you going to bomb? My house? My headquarters building? Yeah, we're going to bomb the hell out of it. Oh, jeez. Thanks for the warning. Then they put all the civilians there and they got blown up. Look what you did. It is like ridiculous. America, gets, is that what we did in World War II? Hmm? How come we're making them do that? How come that's the way we play those games? Because it's about burning up toys and equipment and blood. Lots and lots of blood. Military systems are completely unsustainable when done from the Babylonian angle because the only way to win is to throw more blood at the super beast. The war pigs of the earth just dumping our children's blood all over this to feed the giant huge monster that we read about in the book of Revelation that tramples nations with seven heads and ten horns this huge giant dinosaur monster with all these different animal parts on it from amalgamation of all the stuff in Daniel. The super beast that all the pagan world systems had to offer into one giant huge bloodthirsty monster trampling the saints, destroying this, funding both sides, just uh, can just lay in there. Feed me more of your children's. <laughs> like, dude, 
Ridiculous. America, the good guy, is going to go help Israel, huh? Do not be fooled. Yeah, CNN and MSNBC and all the... Everyone's totally behind the war effort, but not really. You want to know how to support Israel in real life? Allow them to execute what's in their book. Allow them to execute what's in their book. You know that thing that we like called the Bible that we never read? If you read it, you would know the answer to this problem. Moses knew even Joshua didn't have the heart to do this. There are people in the Knesset that are talking about this. They, some of the guys know. But the problem is the military industrial complex, the monsters that will just have this big pet dinosaur want to feed it. The war pigs got to feed the beast. And they have to keep a perpetual war going just hot enough to consume the souls, but not too hot to blow everything up and quit the money from flowing. It's not hard to win a war if you do it righteously. And we don't even know what righteousness is because our righteousness in 2023 is public schools and litter boxes and rainbow prayed shit and total debauchery and Margaret Sanger and all the stuff that that's our righteousness. For Israel to continue to lean on the splintered rod of Pharaoh, a.k.a. the United States of America, for their strength because of Pharaoh's great army is literally not doing what their book tells them to do. Israel should lean on what? And when this happens, you will see the Bible be fulfilled. It might take a lot of pain for this to happen. And it's a, it's, a, it's a travesty every second we do not execute the principles in the Bible. Who fought for Israel when they're coming out of Egypt? And they were entrapped by the Red Sea. The wilderness has shut us in. And the Egyptians comment, their God is a terrible general. <laughs> Are you sure you want to attack his people? You see, when they, when they reject Pharaoh finally and trust in the father, he will fight for them. It's in the book. It will happen. It will cause them to remember. It will cause them to realize why he hid his face from them. Then they will know. And all nations will know that he is the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, as it says in English. What does that mean? We put all of our faith into the mechanics of our military super beast, into the chariots of Pharaoh, is what it literally says. The chariots, the tank divisions, the equipment, the armor, the, buck, you know, the bucklers and the shields and the archers. That's where your faith is. That is a splintered rod. You continue to lean on it and you will hurt your hand. You will fall over. It will break in half and stab you. This whole thing is a test. Eventually they will remember and eventually Babylon, lawless Babylon here, which parades around in clothes of righteousness, will have to go through its deal too. And there are his people here too. See, there's two sides of this coin. I was doing an exercise on Patreon earlier talking about this. This is why the word was arranged into a role. You see the kingdom? Because we're reading about the kingdom doesn't mean that the beginning isn't in the center of who we are as people who are focused on the kingdom, the gospel, etc. This should be in the center, the beginning of, the law, the exodus is inside of us. Just because we're focused on this doesn't mean we discard this. Likewise, just because they're focused on this doesn't mean they don't have this to look forward to. And on the inside, they know that eventually it will all be together because it was always written on one piece of paper. And time is not linear. We talked about that for over a half hour today on Patreon. So if you dig that, you can check it out. But what I have to say about that with Israel is we are literally we are literally fulfilling our role as written in the book. Are we in end times? Well, we're in the latter days. We're in the latter days, in the end times, whatever you want to call that. Are we at the precipice of God or Gog, Magog, right? 
Ezekiel mm, is setting up for it. It's absolutely setting up for it, potentially. But I got news for you. Society, the only reason us spoiled, terrible brats here, okay, have not been completely smashed by the reality of our stupidity is because of the threads of him and his angels holding back the four winds of judgment by a miracle because the time is not complete to do all of his will yet. Just like in the Exodus, it was a, it is for this reason he created Pharaoh and put Egypt in the status they were to make his point of who he is. It's what it says in the book. The Bible is hardcore. People ain't read it. I think that God's like really only nice and he loves even the bad stuff. No, he is righteous too though. See, love is righteousness and righteousness is love. It's all one sheet of paper. The Alpha and the Omega are all one giant huge thing on the same roll. They will eventually learn the lesson, but it's going to be done the way it was written. It'll be a hard lesson. We will learn our lesson too. Okay? And yes, you can read about how the, the reunion is going to happen, right? All the, all the tribes are all going to get back together. Even a couple of brothers are going to get, the brothers are all going to get back together again at some point, but it's going to be a lot of pain to get there. So do you want to be a part of the resistance force to God's good things happening? You want to resist his force and fight against it through our lawlessness, our debauchery? Or do you want to be on the side of good? You have to choose this, right? And we're not helping Israel by funding their enemies. It is asinine to watch the news or the politics. Well, like we need to support Israel. Let me translate that from Babylonian into straight talk. We need to continue to make sure that Israel has tit for tat to make us extremely rich and wealthy so we can deceive all nations in the name. And maybe at some point we'll be burned with fire for our sins. That's what they really said. <laughs> what do you, well, if we just get, right? So, well, if we just got to get Trump in there, Rex, that Trump, you know, help Trump, he's not your savior, man. Trump also was arming the enemies of Israel the whole time. Just shiploads. Shiploads and tonnage and tonnage and tonnage of weapons. You think Trump didn't do Everyone knows this. Trump and Obama and Bush are all exactly the same policy on the back end. They were, they're getting ready for the next big war. It was the pause cycle. He's the guy, he was the front man to represent the pause cycle. Well, they're armed. Why, he's arming them the whole time, getting ready for this one. We are dumb. Like really, really, really dumb. Why? Because we watch and believe the news. It's like, remember in Saving Private Ryan when there's that, uh, what do you call it, PSYOPs German guy like in the village, like, the Statue of Liberty is kaput. The arts, New York City is under the flag of the Germany. Oh no, the Statue of Liberty is kaput. You're going to trust that guy? You think CNN is not that guy, the town crier from the enemy trying to deceive you? They want to eat your children. They want to consume your blood. They have been doing it for 100 plus years. And you trust their news? And then everyone in the prepper sphere immediately got to line up. And we're not allowed to just be quiet and be like, that was a bunch of bullshit. Not allowed to just sit there and continue to work on our systems. Everyone's got to have an opinion about what the news guy said. Like, whoa, there's only a couple outfits that I can even tolerate. If I want to see what the propaganda projection is, I'll leave the links below. They're my bros, okay? They're going to approach it from an angle that is not in complete despair and not clueless to the actual realities of the universe, right? The actual realities that are in, in here, right? So I'll share that below. If you just, if you got to get your fix, but like everyone's repeating the propaganda lines of the side on the right versus the side on the left. And it's kind of weird. Like they both like to sell a lot of shit, don't they? They like to sell a lot of weapons. Hmm? And I think you should buy weapons. But I don't think we should have perpetual war on a global scale to make those guys even more rich. I think good, peaceful people should have the weapons. You guys should have the weapons. 
Why? Guess what? If the good people who were doing their thing that day, reclining in the recliner, over there when that happened on October 7th, if the good people had their shit with them and were ready and weren't subjected to some Babylonian loss and you're not allowed to carry your rifle with you because you're a weirdo. Man, last time I went to Israel, they had freaking M79 grenade launchers on the elevator going down to get a snack. Some teenage girl with four, like a, she was rolling like Terminator. Apparently since I left, they, though it's not cool to do that anymore. The solution is having people, good people who are peaceful, be armed. Then all the tools of the enemy is like, great, like it's almost impossible for them to pull something like that off. You kidding me? If everyone at that concert had their M4 or their whatever, their Colt, you know, 14 and a half inch skinny weight barrel with the um, M21, you know, sight on the front of it, like, I don't think that that would have went down the way it went down. See, that's the solution. The solution is not to give a giant, huge, unlimited printing press of cash to the military industrial complex that starts these damn wars and funds them and then pipes in as the angel of peace. Oh, don't blow up the terrorists. They're so nice. We need to let them get their wind back. One time I was in a fight for my life at a job. It was terrible. Like a horrific, terrible fight. Blood flying everywhere. It was really gross. And it was me and like one other guy were actually in the fight. And we finally were starting to win. And here comes a good idea piping in. Well, hold on, guys. Like, just give them a minute. Like, hold on. We need to like think about this. Like, scared, curled up, curled up in the corner the whole time that me and this other guy are fighting it out. Oh my God, we're going to die. And then when we start to finally win the fight, now he has the courage to come over and pipe in. Well, hold on a minute here. We don't actually want to win the fight. Let me be a leader. As the guy cowering in the corner the whole time when it was looking scary, I have this good idea. Maybe we should let him catch his breath. No! How about let's finish this deal? And what would you guess? It didn't go to go to hell in a handbasket. Hmm? If you want to support Israel, you got to let them be who they are. You got to quit tying strings to all these huge, giant, good ideas and good, like, oh, look at how generous the United States is. We'll allow you to have more guns to kill people that we want to put in your area as long as you become extremely immoral. What? If you become extremely immoral, we'll give you more army tanks and more terrorists to blow the terrorists up so that you can blow, you know, then you can, then we can have money. Talk about the witchcraft of, of cash. Cash is witchcraft using scientific methods and materials to bamboozle people with fancy pictures on paper that make you think it's authentic to project to project authenticity on something that's worthless to then like, this is what you really wanted in life paper with George Washington on it. If you just, we'll give you this paper. If you commit debauchery for us and then we get all the gold, I am telling you, it's a conundrum. And yes, they have every right in the world for thousands of years to do the job. Don't tell me they don't. And if you've never been in a real fight, I don't want to hear you crying in the commentaries. Do you think that just drawing it out forever is love? It's not. It is not love to draw it out forever. But they will never be able to execute that as long as we are in their way, as long as we are throwing banana peels in front of them every damn step of the way, popping out of the corner right when they're about to actually do what they're supposed to do and telling them to stop. And all of a sudden we care about the children. So we throw our children literally into the garbage in the United States. 70 million children killed by their mommies and papas in the United States because we're so moral. But then, oh, the children. Wait a minute. We could serve the family. Like, <laughs> we are going to get nuked. You guys want to fast forward? What do we need to prep for, Rex? Nuclear war. We're going to get nuked. 100% chance. Guaranteed. <laughs> My opinion. Just, if you prep for global thermonuclear war, you're going to be busy to not watch the news anymore. And then it'll solve all of your problems. If you can survive that, then you'll be good. Grow some trees, have some farms, be nice to your neighbor, 
have good relationships, learn how to shoot the badgers in the yard when they come in, have some, have some barn cats, raise your children and your family like you love them for real, knowing that this world is not permanent, permanent, right? That's how you do that. Being a little bit hyperbolic, you think? Is it hyperbolic or hypersonic? <laughs> Come on, guys. You don't think they're going to build all that stuff. Did you ever see, by the way, the nuclear war prophecy videos I did like over a decade ago? should probably look at that. You know, the Bible talks about something like that. Mm. Bible talks a little bit about something like that, okay? So the best thing we can do to help Israel is to get out of their way. Allow them and quit. I mean, we, we're continuously stumbling each other. Am I? See, and here's the thing. Well, is Rex for Israel or against it? Dude, I am for the United States of America repenting from her wicked ways. I am for the remnant coming out of Babylon. I am for Israel doing what they need to do. 100% support them in that. I am for America living like the founding fathers told us to live. I am for my kids getting married and living for another 100 years in peace, growing food, fixing cars, whatever they want to do. Living like the people in the 50s got to live that we never really had when we were kids because it was a very different world. Wouldn't it be nice to have some moral integrity? To at least fear God enough to want to do what he said once in a while? That's what I'm for. The way they package your options are bullshit. The, the Babylon, the world has handed us a test. The news presents it as if, if you're for Israel, then you got to be for this huge giant conundrum here, see? And if you're not for them, then you're over here, see? Turn it off. It is literally Colonel Klutzenblobben from the freaking, you know, hedgerow fighting in World War II, the propaganda specialist, whoever that guy was, right? Turn it off. Don't listen. Just keep doing what you got to do. Man, oh man, oh man. It is, the life, life is so simple. Life is so simple once you just see it. For the first time, I'm here to bear witness. Your reality is simple once you see it for the first time. And I don't think anyone, I don't, I don't think very many people on this earth have seen the simplicity of our actual reality and our choices. It's about loving God and loving your brothers. This digital projection of horse manure, this giant, huge turd bobbing trough at the freaking lunatic carnival of Lucifer called your digital pro projection device, your phone, and your doom scrolling and your addiction to the Babylonian horse crap is absolutely not your reality. You want to see my reality? You want to see it? Give me a second. Hold on a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we got snow up here. Want to see that? Want to see Rex's news? Oh my goodness! Why are you not catching mice? Or are there mice in here? I bet you they're under the building, huh? Hey Jim, what you doing? Well, there are mice. This is where the mice hang out a lot because it's warm. Maybe that's what's going on. Oh my gosh! Look, Hunter Biden. Oh no! Rex, did you hear about the Sam Frigman Lloyd and his currency trial? Like, what are you guys watching on the news? I do not understand what you're all in a tizzy about, okay? We all need to, like, connect with reality, understand he's in control, and live accordingly. You guys, got it? <laughs> we have a lot of cool uploads. Today for the patrons, thanks to the patrons for the support. If you guys want to, more of the conversation, if you want to hear more about this, right, talked about this, you can join us on Patreon. I'll leave links below for you. You're more than welcome to do so. Not going to make you. 
I'm still here with you guys. I'll do these on YouTube as well once in a while. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. You guys have a, a great weekend. Rex out.